My view is that um, if Spain were to apply for this MOU, that would then open up uh, financial resources, financial resources from the ESM, financial resources from the ECB, through the OMT, and possibly even a precautionary credit line from the IMF. Uh, that would be constructive for the market because uh, people would say Spain on one side is committed to do certain things uh, in a monitor and credible way. I, I don't know whether the government is going to apply for the rescue. I think it probably is likely that uh, in the next month or so, uh, now that um, the regional elections are behind and now that the conditions uh, are those of making it more likely, it's likely that Spain is going to apply. And I think if it applies and they reach an agreement and those official money are there, that will be constructive uh, in the market perception of where Spain is. It's, it's not the, the rescue by itself. I think that uh, there are many things that have to happen at the same time. Of course, Spain has to do uh, austerity, has to do structural reforms, has to clean up the banks. Uh, in my view, the austerity has to occur more slowly because if you go from 9% deficit last year to 3% uh, uh, in 2014, uh, the recession will get worse. I think that the IMF is correct in advising that maybe Spain should be given two more years until 2016 to do that fiscal adjustment. You need the monetary policies of the ECB to be more easy in many ways. Could be OMT, could be the policy rate, uh, could be credit easing, could be a variety of things that make liquidity condition better for the financial system and restore credit growth. Uh, you need also a gradual weakening of the value of the euro. Uh, Germany can live with a strong euro, but the periphery of the eurozone to restore competitive and external balance needs a weaker euro, and easier money would help that. The risk of a breakup uh, probably reached the peak sometime in July, when things were really becoming very tense. Since then, uh, that risk has been reduced uh, because of three things. One, uh, one, the OMT pre-announcement by the ECB has reduced the redenomination risk. Secondly, the successful approval and making operational the ESM is putting 500 billion of new resources available to support Spain and other countries. Three, the Europeans are right now talking about uh, a greater union, banking, fiscal, economic, and otherwise. And so either you move in the direction forward of more union and more integration, it might take many years, five, ten years, but at least you're moving that way. Or if you're not going to move that way, at this fork of the road, you're going to go in the direction of more disunion, more disintegration. The, the risk that the US uh, is facing next year are some domestic, and some external. I think that uh, if uh, there is not an agreement on the issue of the fiscal cliff and you have a big fiscal drag next year, so if everything expires you'll have a fiscal drag of four and a half percent of GDP, then the risk of a deep recession is huge. If instead the fiscal cliff becomes a small fiscal bump, say one percent fiscal drag, then the tail risk of a double dip is smaller. The external risks for the US are that if the Eurozone problems were to get next year worse rather than better, that will be negative for Europe but also for the US. Two, if the landing of China would be a hard landing rather than a soft landing, that could tip uh, the US in a negative situation. China is the second largest economy in the world. And three, if the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East uh, were to lead uh, either to a military confrontation between Israel and Iran or tensions so high that oil prices go very high and that's a negative for US, Europe, Japan, China, India and other energy importers, then that could be also a shock that could tip the US into a double dip. Uh, the Euro 
uh, in June and July was weakening, was getting closer to 120. But once uh, the ECB pre-announced the OMT that has significantly reduced the risk of a breakup of the Eurozone for the time being, then the reduction of that tail risk has led to people being less worried about uh, a Euro falling down and eventually collapsing, and that has led to a rally. So whenever risk is on rather than risk is off, the Euro tends to strengthen. Secondly, the uh, Fed is now embarked into a very aggressive uh, new round of quantitative easing, QE3, that is going to be open-ended depending on improvements in the labor market in the US, while uh, the QE that the ECB is going to do if and when they start the OMT is going to be smaller in size compared to the very large. So once policy rates are close to zero, what determines exchange is not relative interest rates, but rather relative money supplies. And the money supply in the US is growing faster than the money supply in the Eurozone that's bearish for the dollar and it's bullish for the Euro.